intercessor is one that intercedes to the cause of praying for others. A person that chooses to stand in the gap to be a mediator for others. One that will volunteer to fight a battle that is not necessarily their own. One that will jump in a fight on behalf of God's people. Now I know that many of you may have been fighters in the world, but you got saved and punked out. You in the world, you talked a whole lot of stuff. And I mean, you wasn't scared to do nothing, but when you got saved, you got scared of the devil. But you need to know today that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if God before you, he's more than the whole world against you. I hear a lot of people saying, you know, I know how to pray, but I don't want to do that warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You can't fight the devil with your natural fist, but you can fight him in the spirit realm. But in order for you to be a true intercessor, you have to have the love of God. A true intercessor gets an attitude when the enemy is coming against their God. A true intercessor is not just going to sit by and let the enemy talk about your God and his son Jesus crucified, resurrected, and coming again, and the Holy Ghost. It's something on the inside of a true believer that when the enemy is coming against what you know to be true, something stands up on the inside of you. No, you don't have to pick a fight. No, you don't even have to say anything. As a true intercessor, if you start praying, God will move on your behalf. Look, when you go into the spirit, God will tell you what to pray. But you got to love them. You have to love them. If you don't really love your neighbor as you love yourself, they cussing you. Next thing you know, you cussing. But when you have the pure love of God in your heart and in your soul, it'll make you pray for the person that seems to be the worst at the very moment. You'll separate the two. You'll love the person and you'll hate the sin. And as an intercessor, when you go boldly before the throne of grace, no matter where you are, no matter what place you're in, you can go boldly in your spirit to the throne of God and know that he's listening to you. And when you begin to talk to him, you have his ear. You can't have his ear if you're in sin all day. You got to live holy. You got to live right. If you are a true intercessor, you don't try to forget where you came from. Because if you can remember where you came from, it'll cause you to pray for the people that are still stuck where you used to be. If you are and you used to be, if you used to be a liar, there should be a love in your heart for all liars. Instead of having a judgmental spirit, you would have mercy on the liar. Because you know that the reason people lie is because they don't want to get in trouble, because they don't want to be rejected, they're full of pride. You know what you used to do and why you used to lie. So because of you knowing that, when you get on your knees and come boldly before the throne of grace, you can say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that lying spirit in my son, in my sister's son, in the preacher, the teacher, the doctor, the lawyer. God, I come against a lying spirit. As an intercessor, you have to be willing to serve. It's hard to serve when you're not a real servant. Real servants don't get mad when what they're trying to give is not accepted. Hmm? A real servant don't get upset when what they're trying to offer is not wanted at that time. A real servant doesn't care if you don't call their name when whatever it is that they do. When you walk in humility, whatever you do, you're doing it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Intercessors must have relationship with God. Intercessors are constant communicators with the Lord. The Bible says pray without. Real intercessors pray all day. They don't wait until something terrible happens and then pray. 
You pray while you're on the bus, on the train, driving down the street in the car. I'm talking about real intercessors. You're not thinking about just your four and no more. You're thinking about any soul that you see that's on his way to hell. As you're not there to judge the situation, you're there to pray for it. I like communicating with the Lord. I'd rather talk to him than people any day. Because he knows all and he sees all. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your remembrance. And I love to tell the saints of God in that that you don't know because God created you. He can reveal it unto you. So there's no reason for you not to know what you need to know. If you study to show thyself approved the workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. True intercessors are not selfish, self-willed, carnal, or fleshly. How can you be a true intercessor and you're selfish? It's all about you. You want prayer all the time. You say you're the intercessor, but you are, your request is the first one in the bucket. You selfish, you self-willed, strong will. If it's not done your way, then it ain't no way. Talk to me. If you're over the intercessor's team, you can't take instructions from nobody else. You don't want no suggestions. The Lord is dealing with me. The Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there's much wisdom. Sometimes what you think is right may not be right for that particular thing. So you cannot peg God. You cannot peg how a person, just because you prayed for four weeks straight and deliverance came through your prayer, does not mean it's going to work the fifth week. But you got to live right to be able to enter into the Holy of Holies. You got to live right in order to have a relationship with God. And those that have a relationship with him become true, bold intercessors.